Mass for You at Home is proudly supported by Catholic Mission. To learn how a gift in your will can leave a legacy of eternal hope and a lasting impact for generations to come, call 1-800-257-296 or visit catholicmission.org.au slash wills. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and also we celebrate the Migrant and Refugee Sunday. So we remember migrants and refugees in a particular way, their own difficulties and hardships, and we pray that God will give them justice and peace and a future hope. Let us once again acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, Glory to, God to God in the highest, highest. And, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. The Almighty Lord says this, Woe to those ensconed so snugly in Zion, and to those who feel so safe on the mountain of Samaria, lying on ivory beds and sprawling on their divans. They dine on lambs from the flock and stall fattened veal. They bawl to the sound of the harp. They invent new instruments of music like David. They drink wine by the bowlful and use the finest oil for anointing themselves. But about the ruin of Joseph, they do not care at all. That is why they will be the first to be exiled. The sprawler's revelry is over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul. It's the Lord who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. Set 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As a man dedicated to God, you must aim to be saintly and religious, filled with faith and love, patient and gentle. Fight the good fight of the faith and win for yourself the eternal life to which you were called when you made your profession and spoke up for the truth in front of many witnesses. Now, before God, the source of all life, and before Jesus Christ, who spoke up as a witness for the truth in front of Pontius Pilate, I put to you the duty of doing all that you have been told, with no faults or failures, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the due time will be revealed by God the blessed and only ruler of all, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, whose home is in inaccessible light, whom no man has seen and no man is able to see, to him be honour and everlasting power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ was rich, but he became poor to make you rich out of his poverty. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, remember that during your life good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he is being comforted here while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone, if he wanted to, crossing from our side to yours and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house since I have five brothers to give them warning so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They have Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. Ah, no, Father Abraham, said the rich man, but if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, If they will not listen either to Moses or to the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus tells a beautiful parable, and you love the way he really prepares the audience to get into the scene. You know, there's a rich man who's a fat pig, you might say, and he's gorging himself and dresses well and doesn't care about anyone else. And then there's this poor man, Lazarus, who actually has a name. The rich man, notice, doesn't have a name. He's not worthy of a name, but Lazarus does. So, of course, it's about judgment, the final judgment, and the fact that at the end of our lives, we will be judged by God, and we will get heaven or hell. 
That's it. Now we may spend some time in purgatory, but eventually we're going to get to heaven. So the ultimate decision is a choice between heaven and hell. And this is the choice that everybody on this earth, whether they're Catholic, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, whatever they are, they must make. Ultimately, it's a choice between good and evil. And each one responds to how well God knows him and how well they, they know the teachings of God, even though they may not know him personally. But this is the fundamental choice. Now, some have said, well, this could be a temporary phase that they're talking about, but really, we're talking about Lazarus is in heaven and the poor or the rich man is in hell. And we know this because Abraham himself says that there is a great chasm here. One cannot cross from one side to the other, so it's permanent. So it's fixed and it lasts forever. An interesting twist though, once the rich man is told this, he comes back to Abraham and says, look, can you send Lazarus then to talk to my five brothers because of, uh, you know, I don't want them to come to this place. I don't know about you, but that to me it sounds like he actually has love for his brothers. Whereas in hell we're told love doesn't exist anymore. So what's going on there? St. Catherine of Siena, a great doctor of the church, she actually has a lovely explanation and says that the reason why he sends him or wants to send Lazarus to his brothers isn't because he cares about his brothers, because, but because he knows that if his brothers end up there, because of his own bad behavior, his own pains will increase. So in other words, it's a selfish way of thinking. It's not loving. And so when we make our choices, be they big or small, ask ourselves, are we doing this because we truly love or are we doing it because we want to make ourselves more comfortable? And let us stand to profess our faith, which is the faith of the church. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God, who raises up those who are bowed down, let us bring our needs before the Lord. That our Heavenly Father may gift Pope Francis with deep wisdom as he calls the Church to struggle against the evil of human trafficking. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That migrants, refugees, and all other strangers in our midst may find strength in our concern for justice and feel the warmth of our love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died will receive their eternal reward. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of the poor, you reach out to all people and provide for their needs. Hear our prayers and open our eyes to see you more clearly in every human person. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. All praise, all glory, all blessing to us.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. The 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Brian our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away of the world, grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Today's Mass is proudly sponsored by Guardian Funerals and Evangelize, an online conference for Catholics. Thank you for your generous support of Mass for You at Home. If you are in a position to contribute or contribute again, you can help secure the ongoing future of this vital ministry.